what is going on ladies and gentlemen we are here with the start of our brand new series and that is our brand new franchise mode hope you all are excited thank you for clicking on the video i really hope you enjoy it um if you would like to help take part in being an assistant general manager in this series definitely hop over to twitch at jet underscore branch and then when you're in there you can help us out with all of the um what's it called all of the little stuff all of the nitpicky lines trades free agencies all the way up to the big stuff with this team that would be that we will be in charge of and or if you prefer to stay on youtube then definitely while you're watching the video pause it drop a comment whatever it might be let us know who you think should be playing what minutes what line with who what situations what free agents, what trades we should make, what contracts we should dump, who should get, all of that stuff. And, yeah, I want as many assistant general managers as we can get on this. I want everybody to voice their opinion. I will read every single comment, every single Twitch chat, whatever it might be. But, with that being said, we are going to jump into episode number zero of our brand new series. And in this episode, we are just going to simply take the time to look over the roster the pro roster and the minor league roster look at the lines look at a little bit of chemistry everything and we are going to try and determine whether we are a playoff team or if we would like to be a seller right from the jump try and go for that first overall pick try and see if we can come out of this out of next year's draft with the likes of Shane Wright the likes of Brad Lambert Slavkovsky all of the top rated guys or if we want to push to the playoffs in year one doesn't necessarily have to be Stanley Cup or bust year one, but if we're pushing for the playoffs, we're pushing for the playoffs, and we want that to be squared away from day one of the simulation. So be sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments. I will look at all of them, take them all into consideration, and wherever direction you guys want to take this, take this, uh, take this team is where we'll go. If you want to sell, 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 we'll go for the first overall pick. If you want to be buyers at the deadline, we will be willing to trade draft picks and prospects to push for that that playoff spot. So whatever it is, you just let me know. But now we're going to jump right into this. So um, I just went ahead and selected the uh, classic mode, like the normal GM mode. We got our name there, Jet Team. This is not the team we are using. This is just, I'm not revealing that just yet. We're going to wait a few more minutes, let the tension build a little bit before we declare our team. But Division, we'll look at that again once we, once we actually pick the team, but we'll just look at a few minor settings here, just normal GM settings, turned off owner mode, no fantasy draft, no GM firing, no head coach lines, none of the auto stuff, none of the relocation, none of that stuff, just keep it simple, normal GM mode. All right, sorry about that. Mic cut off. As you know, I have a terrible mic. Cuts off all the time. But normal normal stuff, just salary cap and CPU trades. That's all we need. And then we're going to go to the brief overview here. And we keep it on Superstar 25 length, even though I doubt we'll get through that. But we do keep it on full sim, and we have per period time at 20 minutes. This is for when we're pushing for the playoffs. And when we're in the playoffs, we jump in and do the manual sim of the games. And in close games, either third periods or overtimes, we do jump in and watch our team in action. So I just keep it at 20 minutes for that. Full sim, obviously. And then rules and settings, it's typical. One big thing I do want to declare from day one is that I'm going to start it. I'll not declare it, but put it a, a prop proposition out there for you guys to answer. Let me know. Um, I prefer to do these with injuries off. It's just easier. Their injuries are so random and non it's just weird. Injuries are always weird in this game. It makes it annoying and nitpicky. But if you guys would like to see injuries, if you would like us to keep that 13th forward, 7th defenseman, 3rd goalie on the roster, um, and do with that, we can turn injuries on, maybe just turn them down, adjust the setting of it, whatever. Just let me know. So that's the first thing I want you guys to let me know. Let me know if you would like injuries to be on, or if you'd like injuries to be off. Pause video, drop a comment, let me know right now. Alright, now that we have that settled, 
we are going to jump into this team. So over the last few Be A Pro videos that I put out there, I asked people to let me know what team they wanted me to use in GM mode. Of course, brand new channel here. We don't get a lot of views, let alone any comments. So that was a little bit difficult. Nobody really voted on anything. I tried to put some teams out there, tell me what team, regardless, blah, 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 all that stuff. Told people to just let me know. So we didn't have a whole lot of voting for that. But what we did have are two guys who do watch, or at least click on all my videos, comment on all my videos, and are very active on my channel. They are by far the most active people on my channel so far. So with that, this one, this selection came at the hands of at phase through wall and at Habs are great. So this one's for you guys. You guys are by far the most active people on my channel. You jump in, a bunch of comments. Look at, like uh, you look at the videos, whatever. Phase is always in the Twitch chat. He's not in here right now, but he's always in Twitch chat, jumping in, watching the videos. I'm sure once he realizes who we are using in this franchise mode, he will be in the Twitch chat all the time, which he usually is. But yeah, we are going to be selecting the team. Luckily, they both have the same favorite team, so this was super easy to pick. But if you couldn't tell already, we are going to be using the Montreal Canadiens for our brand new first ever on this channel franchise mode. We will be using the Canadians. So here it is. We got Montreal in the bigs, Laval in the uh Laval in the AHL. So we have spending for owner personality is four and a half stars. Importance of success is maxed out five stars and patience is at a measly two and a half stars. So we got a decent sized arena at the Bell Center, capacity twenty one thousand, nice old building, lots of history. We are going to try and bring this franchise back to its glory days of winning cup after cup after cup. We have some nice pieces, but do we have enough to push for a cup to start? Or do we need to sell those pieces and plan for the future? That's what you guys are going to help me decide. Let me know at the end of this video, after you watch it all. We will be using the Canadians. So let me know where you would like us to take this team. So just to look over real quick here, we are 88 overall team. Whoops, 88 overall team. We appear to be, so there are three teams, four teams higher than us. We are the fifth ranked team in the Atlantic, right? And with how strong the Eastern Conference is, by far stronger than the West, it is going to be very hard to push for a playoff spot because the top three teams in both divisions are just about set. So... We are going to have to improve greatly. We have some great pieces in this, within this team. Carey Price, legendary goalie. Not a friendly contract, but legendary goalie. We got young stars in... We're just going to jump in, start, to sell, uh, start this career mode, and have that load up. Keep salary cap on, obviously. But <clears throat> we got some great pieces within the team. We have so a great core defense. The only downside is the court, the current defense we have in the pros. So I did a little bit of back of research yesterday, a little bit, looked at the team a little bit, took about 20, 30 minutes to go through the team, look at what we have, look at what we're dealing with and see where I personally think that this team can go in year one, in year two and beyond. But this is completely up to you guys. Anybody who leaves a comment, if you leave a comment, then that's what we're going to go with. All right. Um, does not matter to me, whatever. So we do have some contracts that are not friendly to us. We do have some nice pieces. We do have a good defense. We do have a good uh, good netminder in, in uh, what's his name, in Carey Price. We also have Caden Primo in the system. So that is that. So this is what the best lines look like. This is what the best lines formulate. We have... Toffoli, Suzuki, Gallagher. Toffoli and Gallagher, both snipers, both with not the worst contract, but they're definitely not friendly to us. Suzuki is our young star. He is the centerpiece of the franchise, along with the likes of Cole Caulfield. But Cole Caulfield is not that high-end star just yet. From the looks of it, the way he play, the way he sims in this game, he's just on the cusp of it. We got Christian Dvorak, not bad, 25 years old. He is a medium top six, so he can definitely still grow at 25. We could definitely try and get him up to an 84, 85 and be that nice middle six center for us. I think he's got decent face-offs. He already got decent face-offs, so if they increase it all. Mike Hoffman is another guy with a not, not a great contract. He's 31 years old. He doesn't 
really fit anywhere within this team because I don't want to use somebody like Kaufman here. He's 31. I don't want to use him in our top six. He would be a guy that I would put on the third line scorer, guy that can get us 18, 20 goals, but he does not fit anywhere aside from that top line. So let me know. So yeah, we'll look at this. So actually, um, let's see, do we want to look at contracts first? Okay. Yeah. Actually, forget this. We're going to jump back into the contract. We're going to jump into the contract screen before we look at the lines. And then from there, we will look at the lines once we assess the contracts. So right now, main roster, we're just going to break it down by position. Forwards. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there we go. That is our top 12 forwards. And then once you get down here, you're going to Ryan Poling, who is a nice, also a nice young prospect. Medium top six. I think he's a two-way forward. Yeah, two-way forward. Decent size, 6'2", 197. Definitely a big guy who is still on his rookie deal for another two years. So we have Cedric Paquette. Nice, solid power forward, I believe. Yeah, power forward. Um, we got, so we'll just take a look at the contracts overall here, see who's making the most money. So Gallagher is... Our top guy, Gallagher, fan favorite in Montreal. That passed. He's a sniper. He's on 6.5 for like five more years, I think. Six. So he is definitely not on a team-friendly contract, but he is a fan favorite here. He's not too old. It will take him to his age 35 season, but six and a half is not at all terrible. If it comes to that point, that contract can be moved. But Josh Anderson is a different story. Josh Anderson is six years at five and a half. And this is just a guy that he, so he really fits our system. So he does look like he should be good for us. Actually really fits our system. Did not expect him to fit the system this much, but if I were to pinpoint one contract, that would be the first one that we move on from. It would be the likes of Josh Anderson, whether it be now, whether it be during the season at the deadline or in the off season, you know, because he does fit our team so much. Do we use, do we push for the playoffs build up his value throughout this year in a middle middle uh, six role um, to the point that he's not taking time away from the young guys that we want to get ice time, but he is building up his own value that we can move on from and bring in a much more team-friendly contract in year one. Jonathan Druin, 26 years old, fits a little bit on the third line, two years left. We'll, I love Jonathan Duran when he was an up uh, up and coming prospect, but never really amounted to anything. Playmaker, we'll see how he fits in the lineup. Could definitely be that third line playmaker for us at 81 overall. Don't have a problem with that. Mike Hoffman though would probably, along with Josh Anderson, be my personal pick to be moved. Three years left, I think. Yeah, three years at four and a half million, 83 overall, 31 years old. Doesn't really fit in the team. I'm more than happy to move on from him if you guys so choose. Christian Dvorak fits our first line, fits the second line a bit. Um, 25 years old, not on a too bad of a contract if he grows. If he stays in at 82 here in what is, as since he's 25, will be his last year that he can grow and gain overall point, uh, go up in overall. If he stays as an 82, then four and a half per, for what is it, four years? Yeah, four years is not worth it. Tyler Toffoli is another guy like Gallagher. So it looks like he doesn't really fit the system, unfortunately, but he's got a heck of a shot, good, decent skating, great puck skills, decent physicality, can be another top six sniper for us because the contract he's on isn't too bad. Three at 4.2, that'll take him to his age 32 season, and that is not at all a problem. Joel Armia, Joel Armia greatly, so he's not on too bad of a contract to begin with, four by 3.4, not at all bad. Joel Armia greatly does fit our third line, and if he is in this team, he would be a bottom six player. So because of his 3.4, he is making too much to be on the fourth line, but he's not good enough to be anywhere in the top six. So if anything, Joel Armia is a guy that would play the third line. 6-3, big body, your typical two-way forward, checking line, uh, checking line player, great tracking, great strength. So that's where he would sit. And then Matthew Perot, 33. He doesn't really fit the team, so he might not be 
with us. We'll see how the fourth line works out. Cedric Paquette fits the team very well as well. This is our fourth line center, I think, for this year. Um, great face-offs. And one big thing that I love to have in with me and my team is when we're in the push for the playoffs, I love having a fourth line that is all 78, 79 overalls, up to 81 overalls that can all are all big bodies, complement each other well, and can play really good defense. Centerman with great face-offs, like Paquette does right here. And that's to have somebody that we can count on to put out against another team's top six, let our top six lines rest um, while they're out playing defense. And I really like that. Cole Caulfield, we have on his rookie deal for two more for this year and next year, 20 years old. Another cornerstone of this franchise, along with the likes of this guy, Nick Suzuki. Um, Nick Suzuki is just crazy. He's got a good shot, excellent puck skills, great skating. And he's only 22, so he's only going to get better over the course of the next two, three years. Jake Evans here is, again, doesn't fit the team. 79 overall, he's in that little bit of an intermediate position where he could be in the AHL, could be in the NHL, but since he doesn't fit in the NHL, we might, but he still can grow because he's only 25, we might put him down in the AHL, let him get some top line minutes down there and see if maybe next year when the coaching pool is better than it is this year that we can find somewhere within our lineup to give him or trade him once his value grows because he is on a 1.7 year deal for three years that doesn't kick in till next year so that's not at all bad contract if he grows to i don't know 81 even 82 one point moving him at 1.7 is extremely easy so might be able to get another nice little piece back for him ryan polling 22 77 is also another guy who if we if he fits why can i not see his chemistry am i stupid can you not see their chemistry? Yeah, you can see their chemistry. Coach satisfaction. Is that not an option for Ryan Poling? Why can we not see how he fits on the lines? I'm so confused. All right, I don't know why. We'll check that in the thing, in the uh, actual thing, though. But that's our forwards. Defense. We got Petrie at 6.2 for another four years. Not terrible, but considering his age, he's definitely going to start dropping down. So... If not this year, next year, definitely by year three, we would have to consider moving on from him. Or I think he spent a lot of his career here in Montreal. I think he's like nine years. Yeah, eight, nine years, something like that in Montreal. So if he's a big fan favorite and if you boys that are Montreal fans love Jeff Petrie, we can we can hold on to him until his contract is up and give him a proper goodbye. Ben Sherratt, three and a half this year, it's 83, 30 overall, 30 overall, 30 years of age fits all three pairs equally and he fits them fairly well so that's great big body nice defensive defenseman i believe yeah so ben Sherratt is exactly what kind of players you need you need these guys in your lineup if you're uh, playing in the playoffs which is exactly why I'm pretty sure the Panthers in real life traded for him at the deadline. But as you saw, he fits that well. And making three and a half, cannot complain. As you saw with Joel Edmondson too, 84 overall, only 28 years old, another huge body, six foot four, and he fits every single one of our, power, our defensive lines perfectly. And on a very team-friendly contract, three by three and a half, at 28 years old, cannot complain at all about this contract. He fits it perfectly and... Love the way that he's in there. Here we have David Savard, another guy, defensive defenseman, another big body. And he doesn't fit us as well. But if he gets put with somebody that does fit our lines enough, they can still get that plus one. Might probably won't get like a plus three or anything crazy, but can still get the plus one, still can play well. And at 30 years of age, four by three and a half is not at all bad again for an 83 overall. Brett Kulak here, 1.8 for this year, 80 overall, not bad, fits our team well. Kyle, or Kale, Kyle, jeez, Kale, I actually, Clog, Clay, I'm sure there's some fancy way to say it, what, yeah, he's French-Canadian, yeah, definitely. So, 23 years old, 
he can definitely grow up to the low 80s. He's low top four, so I could definitely see him getting up to 83, pushing 84 overall, for sure, by the time he's done growing. So we have... So our top four is set. Our top four is the top four defenseman you see on the screen right here. And then our last pair is where it gets a little tricky and we have to make some decisions. So we have Kulak and Clegg. We're just going to call him Clegg. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Close enough. But we have both of them. We can put them both out there on the third pair together. For some reason, it doesn't tell me how he fits the lineup, but he fits it fairly well. So we can put two left-handed defensemen. You know, there's nothing against that. But we also have Chris Weidman here offensive defenseman who f does fit all three lines fairly well we have a great coach for our defensemen they all fit extremely well so we will have to make some decisions there with our third defensive pair looking at our goalies as you all know Carey Price Jake Allen and we have this guy Samuel Montembeau I'm fairly certain that's how you pronounce it member of the Florida Panthers or at least was in real life I guess he's on Montreal now but we do have these three, all of them great options. Things to consider, Carey Price, 34 years of age, he is bound to start going down in overall. So if we are going to push for the playoffs, we can keep him for this year, maybe trade him next year in the offseason, or we can trade him at the deadline. If we're not looking good for the playoffs, we can have Jake Allen be our starter. You know, goalies in this don't mean as much as their overall says. Some goalies just sim absolutely terrible. As a Flyers fan, I've used Carter Hart a million times in these franchise modes the last three years, and he has never once, never once simmed for me well, but he'll have a 900 save percentage and a three goals against average, and then ask me for six million a year for five years. So it's just not worth it. It's more worth it to have it a goalie that's 83 to 85 overall, making three, four, maybe five million a year, and sims just really well. So two years left at 2.8 for Jake Allen is not bad at all at 31 years of age. So having them as a 1-2, if we so choose to get rid of Carey Price, would. It's not a team-friendly contract, but it, Carey Price is certainly, certainly, certainly a movable piece. So we would be able to bring in another great defenseman or another great top six forward. Maybe someone for the second line, maybe like a big power forward or a big playmaker or something like that to fit the likes of... Cole Caulfield or who we decide to put on that line with them. That is definitely an oppor definitely a possibility. So that is another thing that I need you guys to let me know in the comments. If you would like us to drop or to drop to trade Carey Price or keep him, we could trade him now at the beginning of the season, at during the season, at the deadline, next off season, whatever it might be. But whether you guys want to go for playoffs or draft pick this year, we'll decide whether we keep Carey Price or not. So be sure to choose that as well and with that being said we'll take a quick glance here see if we got any prospects paul byron so paul byron and um our terry Lekkinen are both pieces that we're going to move i looked yesterday did a little bit of inside research so i had so i had a little bit of a heads up before we looked did get into this video but paul byron and our terry Lekkinen are just both guys that they're just not neither of them are worth keeping they're making two and a half and three and a half million they are ahl players they're 79 overalls 26 years of age and 32 years of age. We'll maybe keep Lekkanen for this year if he fits the AHL system, which he doesn't. So, our Terry Lekkanen, if it's alright with you guys, as well as Paul Byron, if it's alright with you guys, will probably be on their way out this year. But with that being said, we get down to our forward core, and it is extremely weak. Extremely weak in the AHL. We have this guy, Yolenin, who was a second-round pick last year, yeah, last year, three years ago, is on his rookie deal still. So and he's so he's eligible to play in the AHL. You know, we do have a lot of young guys: 21, 19, 21, 22, 23, 22, again 26, 30. Oh wait, this is not sorted by overall. Okay, never mind. I'm stupid. Forget the last 30 seconds of what I just said. But so we get down here. Brooks. This is also another guy we have to look at. Adam Brooks. So he's a center and he's got good face-offs, giving him big minutes in the AHL this year with him being 25 years old, can lead to him growing greatly. So, like, if we offered him a contract right now, if we tried to lock him up long-term, we theoretically... Okay, it doesn't change regardless. But we theoretically... Theoretically... Jesus. 
could lock him up long term for a fairly cheap price right now while he's 78. But if he gets big minutes, he could definitely grow up to that low 80s point and be that fourth line center for us for the coming years. We also have this guy. Doesn't really mean anything. We can keep him. Does he fit the system? Well, at least he fits the first line, so maybe he'll be a piece there. But we have Yelenin. We have Laurent Dolph Dolphin. We have this guy, 30, whatever. If he fits, then he helps us out. But we can also we have also have all these young guys. So we can get rid of or just bench some of the older guys above that I just said that have better overalls. But these guys right here who are young can still grow. All right, except for Badock, but like who are young and still can grow. We can certainly just throw ice time at them, get rid of Byron, get rid of Lekanen, and just throw ice time at the young guys, let them grow. Because I feel like in this in this game, in this the way that it simulates, the way players grow, that just giving them as much ice time as possible is arguably better than anything else for letting them grow. So I don't know. Whatever you guys think, be sure to let me know in the comments. We can do whatever you want with the AHL. But just looking at defensemen, it's going to be the same way. Romanov, this is another thing we have to think about when we consider re-signing Brett Kulak throughout the year. We have Alexander Romanov, who's a high top four. He's already a 78, so even if he has a remotely respectable year, he is going to fly up to probably 82, 83 overall and be our sixth line, our sixth line, our sixth defenseman, if not fifth. Definitely be on that third pair and just will absolutely be a uh, big cornerstone guy for us. Also, this guy, Josh Brook, he's a medium top four. And he's only 22, so he could easily, if he has a good year with Romanov, can fly up to an 80. And then both of them can take that third pair spot, and they just fit right in there. Unfortunate. Oh, we have Xavier. What the heck? Why did it start us? Okay. We also have this guy, I think Samuel, Sammy, Sammy Niku, who is another high top six who could make the push at already 79 overall, who can make a push into that top six in the pros this guy fits the system we'll use him for to help prospects grow but like this guy jordan harris high another high top six so he could definitely get well into the low 80s by the time he's done growing we can give him time probably won't give this guy time unless we need to and caden Gooley can also give time to at 19 years of age so yeah we definitely have the prospects in the ahl we just need to it's just a matter of if you would rather give them a bunch of ice time and let them grow, do whatever happens. Just let that play out or not. Let me know what we should do with the AHL. And then goalies. Caden Primo, Primo is in the AHL, is an 80 overall, is a high starter. The question is, is he going to be our goalie for the future? I don't know. So he already wants a lot of money and he hasn't even played this year yet. So... We could theoretically lock him up for four years at 4.1. Well, you could bring that down a little bit because he does want an extension. We could bring that down to probably three mid threes, like 3.6, 3.7, sign him for four years and still have RFA status when that is all said and done. So we should that should be, definitely be a thing we consider is resigning Caden Primo. Um, or we can just give him a year, a buffer year. But if he does explode in overall because he has a high starter and he's at that point in his career, he will be asking for a lot more money. So we do have to consider that contract extension earlier rather than later because we might be able to save some money on him before he starts to grow throughout the year. And then these guys, 24 years, again, it's nothing crazy here. If anything, we could send down Montembo and him and Caden Primo can just be our AHL goalies, whatever it might be. But me personally, whether we're going for the playoffs over the first overall pick, I don't want Primo in the NHL. I would rather keep him in the AHL, where he will be the starter, because right now, both Jake Allen and Price are our starter and backup. If we, Even if we get rid of one of them, then Primo is still going to be the backup. I would rather get him plenty of time, and then I would, if he has a good year, I would rather bring him up next year, maybe even move on from Carey Price. Keep Jake Allen as our backup, make Keaton Primo our goalie next year, our starter, when he is pushing that 84, 85 overall. Because if he sims well, then 
84-85 is no different than the 87-86 that Carey Price will be because he will probably start to drop off in overall by the start of next season. So that is definitely something to consider because even if we bring in Primo for a three, four, five year deal at whatever, four, four and a half million, three and a half, whatever it is, that saves us seven million dollars to go out and get even another forward because our defense looks pretty solid for next year already with our top four staying the same and those three prospects in the AHL pushing for that those two spots on the third pair. So we could do that. That would open up $7 million for us to go out and get another top six forward. So that is everything. That is all the contracts we have. Let me know what you guys would like to do in terms of buy or seller, who we sell, who you want to keep just for the sake of, regardless of their contract, if you want us to keep somebody just because they are a fan favorite or whatever it might be in the... Um, Within the team, just let me know. That's perfectly fine. We can do it that way, too. So here. So these guys on the fourth line do have a plus one. The only thing is, Josh Anderson is making $5.5 million. We cannot have him on the fourth line. Luckily, he does fit just about anywhere. So like this, we don't... This line doesn't have a center, but this does get us a plus two. Does anybody have decent face-offs? 65. 66. So it doesn't look like anybody has decent face-offs. 69. Doesn't look like anybody has decent face-offs there. But do we move Josh Anderson up to here and get that plus one? Cole Caulfield, Dvorak, and then... Hold on, who are we missing? So we have Jake Evans. Jake Evans, again, he doesn't really fit. Do we have anybody scratched? I don't even know who's on the team right now. So we have him, Clegg, and Poling. So it looks like we throw Poling there. He, again, doesn't really fit. That sucks. So we could just go with this. Could go with something like this. Sniper, two-way forward, playmaker. They should sim decently. But again, what we do with this will depend on if you guys want to go for the playoffs or not. Or we could do this, have polling still in the NHL. He is listed as a fourth-line forward. Or we can just let this play out this way. Or if you want to go for a little bit more reasonable, do this. Do Armia and Jonathan Drew in. And then have it like this. But then again, I'm not paying Mike Hoffman four and a half million, and I'm not paying uh, Josh Anderson. So I moved Josh Anderson up to the second line. How does Caulfield fit into this? He fits great on the third line. So we could even move Cole Caulfield down to here, and maybe all of these guys still have the chance to grow. Maybe they could move up, or maybe we would rather get him time and even consider, look at that. We get a plus three with Toffoli, him, and them. And uh, that, or we could even, we get that plus three. How does Toffoli fit our lines? Doesn't really fit. Dvorak fits decently on the top six. Gallagher. No, we don't want to do that. Just trying to see if anybody fits the second. Okay, so we can do this. This can be our top six for the year. I'm perfectly fine with that. Or we can do something like this. So this does get us a top six, does get this chemistry. Suzuki and Caulfield should be absolutely primed to have huge growths this year as a playmaker and sniper, playing with a good, well-rated Tyler Toffoli and already having a plus three. So we can just see how this plays out. If we're doing bad and you guys want to push for the playoffs, then we can move Cole Caulfield down to the middle six role. Put Gallagher back up, put Armia up, put Cole Caulfield on the third line, because I think, yeah, because this line gets a plus one too, because we could go for something like this. So we could go for something like this within our top nine, where we have Drew and Poling and Caulfield, all guys who can grow. We have Dvorak here, who should be primed to grow with Armia and Anderson, and then this top line is just stacked with two snipers and the playmaker and Suzuki, who we're trying to grow. He should be primed to grow extremely well with that. But then again, that leaves out Mike Hoffman. So then is Mike Hoffman a guy that we just move on from to start the year? See if we can bring in another fourth line piece. Just a big body who can play well. And that, so this is definitely not a possibility. Let me know what you guys want to see 
we can definitely make some changes. In this episode, we're obviously not going to start simulating anything. This is just an analyzation episode, reviewing the team and deciding where we want to be um, come trade deadline, come end of the season. So, like, if you guys wanted to push for the play, so if you want to push for the playoffs, the people watching this, if you want to push for the playoffs, this will probably be, we even get a plus two there, but we also get a minus two on the other. This will probably be our 12, aside from Mike Hoffman. Mike Hoffman will probably be traded if you guys want to push for the playoffs because there's just no room for him in this team. Not worth it at 31. Not worth it to put him on the fourth line, making as much money as he is. Just not worth it. This is how our top nine would probably look if you guys wanted to push for the playoffs. You know, there might be some changes that we could make. Um, I don't know what it could be, but if there's a certain change that you guys want to see make, definitely be sure to figure that out. Let me know. But if you guys would rather let our young guys play and just see how the season plays out. So, like, we could... This is how it would be if you guys want to definitely push for the playoffs. But if you would rather see how... Just see how the season plays out, we could do something like... Maybe something like this, where we have Cole... Cole Jesus. Cole Caulfield. Getting plenty of time. Has a plus three. Playing top line minutes with two great players. And then Suzuki will even get to play with that plus three. We could have Duran... And Dvorak pl playing with a great sniper in Gallagher. That should be primed for both of them to grow very well. Poling here has a plus one as playing with two reasonably, respectably rated forwards alongside of him. Where they should simulate well and Poling should be able to grow. Because that should just be perfect. Perot is, again, he'll just be a buffer guy this year to next year. Because he's 80. His contract expires this year. 33 years of age. I think his name was Adam Brook. Whatever the Brook guy, the center, the fourth line guy was, he could be primed to take this spot th next year. Or he could even be our guy that takes Mike Hoffman's spot. So we could trade Mike Hoffman for a draft pick, for another guy in the middle six here, where maybe we are a bit weaker. We could trade We could trade Josh Anderson. Um see if for some reason a team would want a package of Josh Anderson and Mike Hoffman. I doubt that would ever happen, so we probably won't do that. But that's the possibility. We could go here and let Dvorak get the plus one, playing with Anderson and Gallagher, and just see how this third line simulates. Or we could go with Pocket here and just absolutely let our fourth line suffer. If you guys would just want to let everybody play out, we could trade Hoffman to start the year before we even do anything. We could trade Armia at the deadline. Not on a terrible contract, I think it's 3.4. 3.4, very movable contract to a team that's pushing for the playoffs. And just let our top nine have play with pluses, play with great chemistry, and just absolutely um, and just absolutely let all of that play out. Uh, let's see, who else, do we have anybody else scratched? Jake Evans, does he fit the fourth? Though? I don't think he fit. Yeah, Jake Evans doesn't fit. He could be our 11th forward or 13th forward. Or we could send him down, actually, because he's only 25. I think I'd rather send him down than let him be a bench forward for us. So we can definitely trade Hoffman and bring in easily bring in a draft pick for him and maybe like a, I don't know, another fourth-line forward that's 79 to 81 rated, easy contract, respectable defensive, his big body, just whatever it may be. So we could definitely do that. And again, we can test these things month to month. So that's how I typically do my simming, is month to month with when we're just simming. We'll sim from, it'll probably end up being, whenever the season starts, in the middle of October. We'll sim the first two, three weeks till November 1st. We'll stop. We'll look at how we are. Typically, I don't make changes in those first two, three weeks. That's just kind of a test period. And then I will sim November 1st to December 1st. And depending how we are on de December 1st is typically when I'll start making changes. Because those first two weeks, two, three weeks in October, I don't really make changes. There's no point. It's just at the beginning of the season. Maybe guys are, some guys are getting used to playing with each other, whatever it might be. Um, yeah, it's just not worth it to make changes at that point. Unless something seriously wrong is happening and we're like three and nine or something. But other than that, even if we're hovering around 500, slightly below, slightly above, I would probably leave everything and let that first full month of November play out. Stop at December 1st and then look and see how we're doing, right? So that's the theoretic way that I 
prefer to do things. So again, remember guys, if you want to push for the playoffs, this is how it's going to be. If you would rather let our guys just get ice time and play themselves out, this is probably something like it would be maybe this to give polling the plus one and then let just the second line, hopefully they sim well, test it out, see how it works, and then we can always make changes week to week, month to month, whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably going to do it for our forwards. Let me know in the comments. Let me know every single thing you want me to know in the comments. I will consider, read, answer all of them. But we're going to look at the defense real quick. And wow, defense is probably set for this year. It is pretty stacked. So this plus five, unbelievable. Just seeing if we get any pluses anywhere else changing it. But I don't think there's a point in changing the defense at all, unless you want to bring in a man by the name of Kale Clegg. So he doesn't get us a plus anywhere. It doesn't really fit any of our lines. So yeah, if he's in the lineup, we can't get that plus. But, but we can just test it out, see how they sim. And if he is not simming well, we can always bench him and bring in... Uh, who the hell was it? I don't even remember his name. Chris Weidman, that's who it is. We can bring in Chris Weidman, put him here where we'll get the plus, and we can do that for sure. Chris Weidman, only offensive defenseman on the team, so we are more than welcome to do that, and I can always just send Clegg down to the AHL, let him get minutes there, and let him come up with the likes of Romanov and Josh Brook and all that. So we have that. So I don't think, other than that, I think these top five spots here, all three left and the top two on the right, are set in stone. Nothing to change. The only thing that changed on defense is, do we want... Um, do we want to try Clegg in there without the chemistry, or do we want to just keep Weidman in there with the chemistry? Because Kulak's 27, he's on his way out this year, so it doesn't matter how he sims, how he plays... It only matters how Clegg will play, because Weidman's also 31, so that doesn't matter. We can just keep him on as 7th defenseman. If you guys would like injuries on, we can totally do that too. Um, so other than that, I don't really think there's anything to change here. Power play. Power play. Okay, so power play is something you have to play with. I will, I will figure out how I think the power play should work. So if there's anything, you guys know the two we have on our team. Leave a comment on how you want the power play to be set up, who you want to have extra power play time. And how you want that. I will off camera set up the power play that will give us the best chemistry or what I think sh or who I think should be getting the most time on the power play. And we'll come back and reassess that to start episode one where we will actually be simulating some time. Same with penalty kill. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's much to change because I really do want Poling and Dvorak, both middle six forwards. I do want them getting that extra ice time on the penalty kill. And I'm fine with Armia and Perot. We can test it out to see if we can get somebody else time. That might be able to grow too, like the likes of, uh, what's his name, Jonathan Duran, because as he's a playmaker, so we probably won't see him But I'll test this out too, and we'll reconvene in episode one for what it should be. Same thing with defense, the defenseman on there, probably set in stone, but we can also, I'll also look at that off camera and then come back to decide that um, in episode one. But extras, again, extras. We'll probably stay the same. You know, I probably will take polling out of here. Sorry. I'm at my house alone and I thought I heard something. But so Hoffman will be taken off here and so we'll probably polling, but I'm not 100% sure yet. You know, maybe we'll just let him ride it out and see how well we're doing. Four on four, again, we'll probably just be a mix of our top six forwards. Um, goalies, again, let me guys, let me know what you guys want to do with Carey Price because he's 87 rated. He's bound to start dropping in overall. Might be great in real life, but in the game, 34 years of age, he's bound to start dropping. And he's carrying a hefty price tag. So do we trade him at all? Do we let him write a contract out? Do we trade him now at the deadline at the beginning of uh, the off season, so we have that cap space going into free agency? Whatever it is, you guys definitely let me know. And then again, we have these four guys scratched. So even if, so I do want to keep Primo in the NA, in the AHL. So if we trade Price, we will probably let Montembeau ride it out as the backup. 24 years of age, he can still grow to an 80. So that is not at all a problem. 
So we're going to look at the AHL super quick. This video is pushing a lot of minutes, but after we look at this, we're going to wrap it up. Um, also, with scouting, we will... Is this head coach best lines? Okay, here we go. So, also with scouting, I'm going to go to roster moves, actually, and put Jake Evans down here to see if he fits anywhere. But also with scouting, I will do all that off camera. I can, because it's, it's too long. It's just annoying to do. Um, but I will do that off camera. And then I can just start the episode one along with along with uh, looking at the special teams lines. We can do, um, I can show you and give you a quick summary of how I do that. I get my, the way I do my uh, scouting is... Um, I actually just recently got it a couple weeks ago. I've never actually done it before, so this will be my first time doing it. But I got it from another YouTuber by the name of Sleeveless Gaming. Shout out to him. Great YouTuber. Cool dude. Never actually met him or anything. Just watch his videos, and he seems like a super cool dude. But, um, but yeah. So that's how that is. All right, so it looks like... So I'll be doing that, and I'll just be doing that off camera. All that little nitpicky stuff I'll do off camera. So Jake Evan, or Artari Lekkonen doesn't fit. Brooks really wanted to get him ice time. Byron fits the second line, so if he can somehow help. So Byron will probably go here. Yeah, he is that. Roy fits the second line, so this guy can't fit the second line at all. Yeah, so he fits the first line more. But we don't... Can we get a plus one? So we get a plus one with Anton Alexander for in. Get that plus one. Playmaker, two-way forward, two-way forward. So that's not too bad. This is where it seems to get fishy. Martel does not fit. Damn. Love Danik Martel. Former flyer. Shout out him. Um, fourth line. We'll keep Laurent Dauphin on that fourth line. And then Yolenin's definitely getting bumped to the first line. Can we get a plus one? We cannot. So we have them two right there. Lekkonen, you're probably going to be traded, so we'll do that. Um, you know, we're just going to look at chemistries real quick and wrap this video up because it's already taking a while. So let me know. So the top six might stay the same. I'll figure out if I can get a plus one on that first line, but that second line is probably set in stone. And I'll see what I can figure out off camera with this bottom six. I'll just see what I can do, see if there's anything that we can fix to at least get to evens, if not plus uh, pluses. So we have these guys on the back end too. He fits the third pair. Second, second, third, second doesn't so we get a plus two there didn't we didn't brook yeah brook fits the third a bit okay so we do have pluses there unfortunately the three guys that i wanted to get the most ice time only fit in the bottom two pairs so that's a bit annoying but we definitely we'll keep him there he's 31 but he's sim i hope uh, him and romanov will sim well in net uh we're gonna keep primo um, but scratched. Here we go. So we have him. We can put him in it. Misak, Misak. Fits the first line a bit, but nothing really. Um, sniper. Alright, so... Hellis fits the second line a bit, and he is 21. Medium top nine, we can throw him in there. Medium top six here with 19-year-old Ian Misak. guess that's how you say his name, I don't know. We can throw him, try and get him on the first line, see if we can get a plus there. Throw, or we could just throw Badak on there, and really definitely get a plus one, because he'll just boost the chemistry tremendously. He's already 26, so he's not going to grow 68. But we could, for chemistry purposes, do that if you guys so choose. Or we could do this guy, 26, 70 overall. I'd probably much rather do that than having the 68 down there. Um, Harris, we can try and fit him in. This guy, or even this guy, even better, 25 at 72. He can still grow, so we can try and throw them him in there. Um, he fits our bottom six, so Pizzetta will probably be somebody we throw in there. Again, I'm going to do this off camera. If you guys have, or even this guy, he is a lower rated, 20, but he is 22 years old, so he can still grow a lot, so he can try getting him on the first line. So we do have a bunch of bench guys here who do fit, and he fits our third line at uh, 23 years old. Again, bottom six. Won't say it will amount to anything, but there's always the possibility of it. So definitely, 
everything you just watched, definitely let me know what you want to do. I will work, I'll see what I can work out off camera with Misik, Hillis, Badock, Lucini, Videmo, Pizzetta, Teasdale, Ginak, whatever, however you say his name. But I will work that all off camera. So, but by all means, please let me know how you want to play, how you want to, who you want to see get ice time, who doesn't matter, all that stuff. Who you want to see on the power play penalty kill, because also for that, I will do that off camera and then start off there. But yeah, so this has been a very long video, so we will cut it off there. Um, just wanted to go through the team and the lines in this one. Just a brief overview. Um, so definitely let me know where you would like to see this team this year. What you want to push for. If you want to push for that first overall pick, I'm more than happy to. If you want to push for the playoffs, I'm more than happy to. There honestly might only be a few changes that need to be made to the NHL team uh, before we're able to push for the pros. Or push for the pros. Push for the playoffs. So if you, that, if you want that, then definitely let me know. But, um, yeah, that's where we're going to cut it off for this one. Episode zero, just analyzing our team. Thank you so much for watching. I did hope you enjoy it. In the next episode, I will start off with just a quick, 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 quick overview of how I did the scouting, the what we're going to go for with the lines to start the year, what we're going to go for with the AHL lines, the special teams, how that worked out chemistry-wise, who we're giving all that ice time to, whatever. But by episode, by the start of simulation in episode one, I do want to be set in stone. Okay, it doesn't have to be set in stone, but I do want to be relatively decided if we're going to push for the playoffs, if we are going to go for the first overall pick, or if we have a little happy medium where we let Caulfield go up into that top six role and just see how he simulates because he does have top, he does get plus one chemistry on that. I think it was the first line with Suzuki and Toffoli. He does get that plus one chemistry. So we can just see how that sims and check ourselves around December 1st and see if it's going well, then we can push for the playoffs. If it's not going well, we can just throw the prospects up, throw the young guys who can grow up into that position where they can get a bunch of ice time and we can start trading some pieces. So guys, be sure to let me know what direction you want this team to go, who you want to get ice time and who you are willing to let us trade and what kind of pieces you want us to trade for. Okay. So let me know all of those things. If you made it to this point in the video and are still watching, not sure there will be many, but if you did, then definitely be sure to let me know because I will like the help of all the assistant GMs that I can get. But we will start off with all that stuff in episode one, and we will also manually sim the preseason. So if there are any prospects that you would like to see get called up or just get top six ice time for the preseason only, let me know that. We can do that too. Any of the high 60s, low 70s, mid 70s prospects that you want to see in preseason, we can definitely bring them up, throw them on there just for preseason, and then we will finish off episode one, excuse me, we will finish off episode one with a, uh, with a simulation of, I don't know how long, we'll just see how long the rest of the stuff takes, first month to, month, two, three months, whatever it is, but we will definitely get into simulation in episode one, but yeah, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much, I really hope you enjoyed it, I'm looking forward to this series, I think we got some great pieces, so if you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, jump over to Twitch, give me a follow, turn on notifications so you can see when we go live and are dealing with all of this GM stuff. If you watch on YouTube, then you can easily just drop a comment. I will respond to every single comment that is left on the YouTube and we'll take all that into consideration when we're making moves throughout the year to start the year and all of that. But yeah. That's going to do it for me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. It was a long video, so thank you so much for sticking around. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all in the next one. But until then, take care of yourselves and peace out.